Hey there everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for joining us again. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to make a mortise and tenon joint with your router. Mortise and tenon joints are something that I've cut by hand all the way up until this point, but after watching one of the uh, Wood Whisperers videos, Mark Spagnoli showed us how to, or showed me, how to do really quick and easy mortise and tenon joints, and I'm about to show you guys how to do the same. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So there are three things that you're gonna need. One is gonna be your router. I have the Bosch 1617, um, which is on the plunge base right now, and you can purchase this uh, edge finder uh, or edge guide for it as well, so you're gonna need that. And then the last thing that I have in here is a Freud uh, 3 8 inch up spiral bit. And the up spiral bit uh, is one that I had recommended by Mark Spagnoli from The Wood Whisperer. So I gave it a try and man, it's a lot better than any of the other bits that I have on hand. So worth the money, go ahead and purchase it. It's like, I think $40, but I'll leave a link down in the description. Next up, you're gonna go ahead and mark where you want your mortise to go. You're only gonna mark the start and stop line. You can ignore this middle line. That was from a practice run that I did, but you wanna make sure that your lines go to where the edge of the bit is going to stop. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark the center. I don't really care where along the length this where along the length this guy goes, but I wanna put him in the center of this board. And if you did have a place that you wanted to specifically put it, that's where you would have your starting mark. But in this case, I'm just gonna start it right here. Three and a half inches goes down to one and three quarters inches. So once you have your location marked right here, you're gonna go ahead and line up with the center and you're gonna put a mark out at the length of your tenon long, which in this case is gonna be three and a half inches. So one, two, three and a half inches. Mark across the line right here. Now what this is gonna do is you're gonna get right up to the edge with a round and you're going to have to round off your tenon unlike what I have here in order to get it to fit properly. But now that we've got the center marked at the bottom, we'll go ahead and get the center marked at the top. So once we have the center of that marked, we're going to go ahead and put our router on top with the edge guide. And then we're gonna do some fine tune adjustment to get it so that this guy lines up right in the very center. Alrighty, once we get that guy put on there, we're gonna go ahead and lower this down. Rotate your bit until you can see the edge of it. You're gonna bring it down until you can see the light coming through the bottom. Right about there. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this using the edge uh, using the edge guide so that it slowly brings this bit over to the center of that line. There we go, centered right on top. So before I go ahead and turn the router on, I'm gonna walk you guys through what I'm gonna do in order to get this set right. So I'm gonna go through and line it up with the edge here and I'm gonna do a slow plunge all the way down to the depth and then do a slow plunge all the way over here so that I've got a dedicated stopping point on each side so that as I go through and take my small passes, it's easy for me to uh, tactily feel where the edge of the hole stops. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're setting your depth on this guy, set your stop to the total depth that you're going to go. On my mortises, I've been doing a sixteenth of an inch further than my tenon length is going to go so that I've got a little bit of space right there at the bottom. So go ahead and make sure that you set that guy and make sure that you're using the hard stop so that when you get down to the last pass all the way across here, you're setting on that hard stop. All right, let's go. Well, there you go. You can see how the edge of the router bit touched up exactly with the edge of the hole. And we got our depth sitting in there. And that is sitting at, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is one and a sixteenth inch on the dot. Next up, we've got our tendon, which is gonna be two different pieces. One is how far in do we cut, and then how deep do we cut. And how far in, in my case, is a one inch tendon because I've got a one and a 16 inch hole, although I just designed it around that from the beginning. And then the depth is going to be making sure that we end up with three eighths of an inch. Now, if you go three eighths of an inch line to line, you get a very nice loose slip fit. 
you want to go with a little bit more of an interference fit, that is totally up to you. If you're going to be gluing this, you can go with line to line or even a little bit looser than that. Uh, tolerances are up to you. But you're going to go ahead and do the math. And so in this case, if you've got a one and a half inch board, divide that by two is going to put you right in the middle and then divide your bit in half and you're going to subtract that off. So rather than taking down to three quarters of an inch, we're going to go three quarters of an inch minus three sixteenths of an inch for a three eighths bit. So next up, when you're measuring your tendon, what you're going to want to do is measure out to the length of your tendon that you're going to want, in my case, one inch. And then because I'm lining it up with the center of my bit and I'll be pulling off that top half, I want to go back the half width of my bit. So in this case, it's three sixteenths of an inch, which puts me right there. Go ahead and strike a line. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing where we line up with this guy in the center of the bit right here and set the depth to what we had just talked about. So on this one to walk you through what I'm gonna do, now that I have everything lined up, I'm gonna go take a single pass across this line, take a single pass across the end to keep it from chipping off the backside and then I'm just gonna slowly work my way up the center. One of the things you wanna keep in mind with your router is to always try to be cutting up into it so it should be pushing back at you rather than letting it run away. If it's trying to grab it, so if uh, in this particular case, if it's rotating around this direction, I wanna push it this direction right here because it is cutting into it and I'm pushing against the resistance as opposed to pulling it in this direction, which means that it basically is trying to grab and run itself down. So it's rotating like this, trying to push itself further down along. So I always wanna be pushing up and away from me. And then nothing special about side two because all the measurements are already set. So I don't even need to mark this side before I go through and do it. Next thing you do once you get those two things together is you want to do a fit test where you go ahead and take the tenon and only slide in a corner and figure out how tight it's going to be. So that's right about how tight I wanted it. Uh, one of the other ones that I cut, you can see that it is a very, very tight fit, but that could be fine if you're doing a dry assembly. So just make sure the fit is the way you want before you start carving down your tenons because the next step is to cut the corners off your tenons so that it fits nicely within uh, the rounded holes of your mortise. So in this particular case, the reason that I chose to use sandpaper instead of a chisel is because this pine is incredibly soft and this tenon is so tiny that I didn't want to splinter any of it as I was coming down. Uh, if you're using a hardwood, you'll definitely want to use your chisels, but in this particular case, sanding worked great. And now for the moment of truth. There you go. Nice, tight, mortise and tenon all the way through. The only thing that I would change is it looks like I overshot by just a hair on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and blame that on the fact that these uh, non-dimensioned two by fours are probably not exactly at the dimensions that I had estimated they were, but there you go. Nice, tight fitting mortise and tenon joint and in way less time. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about how I did this process, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. I also wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to uh, Mark with The Wood Whisperer for initially putting on his video, which introduced me to making uh, mortise and tendon joints in this way. Awesome, well again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section down below. And if you like the kind of videos we're putting out, we would really appreciate the thumbs up or subscribe to the channel as a whole so that you can see all of our videos as they're coming out in the future. But thank you guys again. Hope you have a great one. Bye.